Hey, what's going on, everybody? Uh, welcome back to the Recon Angling live stream. Uh, as you can see, we're kind of in a still kind of uh, moving on to our permanent home, but right now we're in a temporary space here at Buckboard Marina while we finish the actual studio. We'll, we'll be uh, doing our live show moving forward. What's going on, Jake? Um, but anyway, uh, it's been a, a very short but exciting uh, ice season out here at Flaming Gorge. What's going on, uh, David? Um, very short year out here at the Gorge. Most of you that live out here know um, it's been a you know, really short ice season. Uh, I've been out guiding uh, 11 days this year, and uh, it has been absolutely epic fishing out here uh, with clients. What's going on, Sean? Uh, we've got uh, four fish in the uh, 40 pound class range this year. And, he, and the biggest one uh, this year is 44 and a half inches so far. Um, and that one was just over 40 pounds, just massive lake trout, eight fish over 30 pounds this year and uh, about 21, 22 fish over 20 pounds. Uh, just it's been an, uh, been an epic year. You guys will see the post. I'll probably do a post in the next few days. Been kind of keeping it under wraps while I'm out here guiding. Uh, what's going on, Jason? The happy uh, belated birthday, by the way. Um, but the uh, we've had high winds out here, 45 degree temperatures. What's going on, Tony? Uh, high temperatures out here in the 40s, and then we had 40, 50 mile an hour winds out here today. So uh, we got a lot to cover tonight. Uh, I want to go over some uh, some gear I've been using this year, put through the ringer. Um, that I've really enjoyed doing. We're going to do a random giveaway for those of you who uh, just simply uh, like the live show. So all you have to do is like the live show and I'll get more into that giveaway. We're going to do the, uh, the kids giveaway as well. Uh, I've been trying to get this. I had some software that automatically goes through the comments. It decided not to work. <laughs> so I'm going to have to go through manually. I wanted to announce the winner while I was on the live show. Um, unfortunately, I won't be able to do that uh, tonight. I'll be able to go over what you guys are going to potentially win. And then once the show's over, I'm going to go through manually, look at the comments uh, that are on that kids giveaway, and then uh, probably do a special live just to announce the winner of that so I can get this stuff off to everybody. Um, so let's talk about ice conditions out here at Flaming Gorge. So, uh, you know, there's, uh, as many of you know, there's solid ice from Firehole all the way down to about County Road 11 at Flaming Gorge. Uh, you know, you're looking at anywhere from eight to 12 inches of ice. Now you get out here by, um, right out here in front of Buckboard, uh, there was, about six inches of ice before we got the warm weather, six, six and a half inches. Um, plenty of pressure ridges out there. Uh, we had to we had to help a gentleman out of one the other day. Um, really not a good scenario. Didn't have cleats, didn't have spikes, didn't have all the all the stuff that you should have when you're out here, uh, you know, on this ice and crossing these big pressure ridges just because it was safe to go out there in the morning. Doesn't mean that when you come back at night, that that stuff is going to be the same, that those pressure ridges are moving all day. So those of you guys who are coming out to fish the, the population control and domination tournament, uh, Tony's going to be joining us about seven o'clock, the owner of Buckboard Marina. And we're just going to talk a little bit about the tournament coming up this weekend. Those of you guys who want to enter can still come and do so. Uh, there's plenty of room. What's going on, Ryan? Uh, there's plenty of room to go ahead and enter that tournament uh, so we're going to dive into that. I'm going to talk about some ice gear I've been using, uh, but back to the ice conditions, uh, about six inches. And then once you get out to Big Bend, those areas, um, you know, you're looking at about seven, eight inches. But with this warm weather, guys, there's going to be a lot of spots that are going to be opening up. So if you are out there, spud your way out, spud your way back, um, you know, bring a throw rope. If you got floating suits, make sure you got the jacket and the bibs on. Be safe, be smart out there. You know, we kind of got the two most dangerous times to be out on the ice in about a two-week period. Ice on and ice off. 
you know, you have good building ice, but there's still areas that we found, you know, where there's eight inches of ice and there's pockets that are, you know, uh, we call them manholes where you have a six by six foot hole in the ice, essentially, that is about an inch thick. So that's why always, you know, just be alert when you're going out there and spud your way out. What's going on, Chris? What's going on, uh, Rick? Um, oh, yeah. Sean's got me on the big screen. Perfect. I, I finally made it. I finally made it big in someone's house anyway. Um, but anyway, um, let's kind of, you know, dive into stuff uh, that I've really enjoyed this year. And uh, what's going on, Josh? Um, and I'm going to start with the uh, dynamic lures ice rod here. Now this is the 28 inch medium. They make a 31 inch medium as well, which I love for trout. Um, this is going to be, I'm going up to cascade next week for about five days. Uh, pretty amped for that trip to get out there and catch some big jumbo perch. Um, these Abu ice max reels, um, really smooth drag on these. Um, and what I really like about this, you just hit the button and then that folds up. So when you guys are storing them in those rod cases, it really makes for an, uh, some extra room. And I like the big handle on here too. So if you're wearing gloves, it's very easy to, to grab and reel on a smaller reel. And then uh, I have the, uh, the dynamic resolute line on there. It just looks so awesome on this reel. Um, this is actually eight pound test, which has the diameter of six. Uh, just some great stuff that I kind of put through the ringer this year. Um, with this stuff early season for, uh, you know, trout and stuff like that through the ice and uh, has been working out really good, that combination. Um, I don't know. I thought I brought my big Laker rod. I didn't bring my big Laker rod, but uh, this year I used a lot of the Abu Zeta um, sp uh, spinning and uh, spin cast or bait casting uh, reels really smooth drag on these big fish on those. So they're, they're well worth the money. You know, those reels are in the $180 range. Um, but the, the drag that's on these is just so smooth. Uh, we lost a lot less fish with clients this year using those reels and those smoother drags. Um, if you guys are looking for an intermediate or the cheap route, um, the Abu Garcia black max, uh, in the bait caster, was a really good performer this year too. I keep the drag a little bit looser on those on those reels, uh, just because that the drag system isn't as smooth. So if you have it too tight, you'll notice that your drag kind of pops when it goes out, and that's just because it, it just doesn't have the bearings and the capacity to really handle fish that big. But if you keep that drag a little bit smooth, uh, it's it's still a really good viable option if you're looking at that. 50 to 60 dollar reel to kind of get you into the game so to speak uh let's see ryan wants the new on that abu the real stem looks looks very long very nice he hates the bail hitting the gloves yeah so this is actually i'll kind of put this ryan's comment up there um but i really like how this bail is just kind of nice and thick on there and it's short, so it really keeps it out. And then this long handle keeps your gloves and stuff away from that bale, keeps a smoother presentation. Uh, but but these are really smooth. I've I've had the uh, older versions of these reels as well, which were straight black, um, and I've had those whoa, for a couple years now, and uh, really like really like that reel. Um, I also want to talk about, let's see here, if I can grab them, uh, the striker, the striker stealth gloves. Um, so I'm actually going to be giving a pair of these away. Uh, so when I announce the winner, shoot us a message, I'll get your size and I'll have them shipped directly to your house. Uh, but these, these striker stealth gloves are really good gloves, not only for ice fishing, uh, but for, for open water as well. Uh, you don't lose a whole lot of, of uh, feel, and it's actually got the finger on here. If you guys got touchscreen electronics, um, you'll be able to utilize that. Same thing with your phone, um, and it's got the nice grip down here on the bottom. I use these a lot um, when 
when getting big fish, tailing a big fish or bringing them up by the mouth and just kind of sliding them on the ice. These gloves are waterproof. Uh, they're super flexible and uh, they're just, they don't really, they're not really bulky. So you don't really lose a lot of movement and they're actually super warm uh, for their size. So the Striker Stealth Gloves uh, kind of made it through the process, through the ringer. I have uh, two pairs of these gloves um, and I absolutely loved them all ice fishing season. Um, now we're going to get in to talk about, as you guys who have watched this, I got this sucker filled to the brim. we me move this microphone a little bit. Um, you guys have seen the Plano Atlas backpack. Um, what I like about this is if you guys use a lot of jigs and spoons, this is actually uh, the drop zone up here. So those are two big magnets uh, that you can throw stuff up and it stays. But what I really like about this is the amount of storage that's in here. And you guys are going to see kind of what I pull out of this thing. So I got my my battery for my yeah Darth Maul gloves. Yep, pretty much for my Razor Auger here. Uh, I got my battery in there. I got the Dakota Lithium uh, seven amp hour battery. Another seven amp battery. I got my propane for my heater. Well, there's a jig head down there too because I just got poked. Uh, and then I got my 18 amp hour as well. Um, and so what I like to do is I take all this stuff out of my electronics, put it in the bag so I know everything is in the bag. So when I bring it into the house, I can charge all of my batteries. And then I also have the big Plano edge box here as well. So um, you can fit a lot in this bag. It's very easy padded, very easy, excuse me, to move around. Um, and it really allowed me to organize my stuff. And at the end of the day, I know all my batteries are at one spot. I got a fresh thing of propane that stays warm inside the bag and in my truck when I'm driving around, that propane is there, ready to go. So when I'm out on the water, that bag is with me. I got all my tackle in there. I can put uh, my food and drink in there as well. Put these batteries off to the side here. Um, and I'm just gonna kind of talk about what's inside of the box, right? You guys probably wanna see the baits I'm using to catch these big fish or whatnot, but we'll put this sucker here. But um, I really like these Plano Stowall bags that came out this year. So these are individual bags that come out like this. This is a 3600 um, series bag. As you can see, it fit right into that box, no problem. I can put all my tubes in there. That keeps them all nice and organized out of the elements. Um, you can put your phone in here. You can put pretty much anything you want that you don't want to get full of water in these bags. I think they retail for nine bucks. Uh, this also comes in a bigger version as well. Uh, but I've really been enjoying just having all my tubes like this, I can see what's in each bag. I don't have to worry about that being discolored. I know everything is safe, waterproof uh, inside there. It just keeps everything organized, guys, and keeps you out in the water a little bit longer. I'm trying to see what else I got in here. Uh, but, yeah, so this, this whole system has been uh, just really good. I can I don't know if you can see this, but I have all kinds of stuff. I'll try to do it without losing it. That sucker is packed to the brim full of full of tubes. So um, you only really need one this size. So you don't need to get more than one. Um, you know, you can fit a lot of stuff into this uh, this Plano this Plano Edge box here. And then so you, you're basically got like triple protection. Yeah, Ryan, he probably needs them for his shoes too, so he doesn't get his shoes all wet while hiking way up in the mountain. Um, and then I also guys, uh, started using razor augers this year, um, an American owned company. Um, and I've been really impressed. Uh, the auger, you know, truthfully is, is a little bit heavier than the strike master. Uh, not much, uh, but the amount of power and torque that's on there, uh, was, it was actually really nice, uh, to get out there and, and, and put this, uh, this auger through the ringer. So if you guys are looking to support, you know, uh, an American company, um, 
American small business, uh, you know, and you're looking for your next um, electric auger, uh, check, go give Razor, uh, go give him a shout out, check him out. Uh, I've loved my auger so far this year. Um, and uh, it's just great customer service. So something to think about. Um, that's kind of it for, um, you know, those type of things. If you guys have questions or comments while we're going along, feel free to shoot them in the comments line. Um, yeah, I'll try my best to get back to you guys uh, while we're doing the live show. Uh, but we got a pretty cool giveaway for the kids out there. Uh, so, you know, if you guys are still watching and you haven't commented, we're looking for pictures for 2022 of your kid out fishing. Uh, you know, get outside um, and explore the outdoors. It doesn't have to it doesn't have to be of them holding a fish, just out there enjoying fishing. Uh, we got an, an awesome giveaway uh, for the kids. So we got this Plano Speed Top Fold right here. Um, this is an excellent bag. Um, and I'll kind of show you guys. It's actually really, really an awesome bag here. Um, but you can, you can just fold the sides down like that. Now you have easy access to these two tackle boxes inside here. Um, so that's part of the gift. Now... You're going to need stuff to put inside of here. So we got our friends at Dynamic Lures uh, gave us a bunch of stuff. So we have some sneak attacks, trout attacks, HD ices. I uh, believe there's some micro attacks in here as well. Um, a couple uh, decals here. They're going to go inside that. Um, and here's another package of micro attacks. We got a, uh, a awesome little Cabela's spoon here, um, some tubes from Freshwater Basics, uh, a couple bobbers here, and then we got uh, you know a bunch of decals. We got a Plano restrictor, you got your Aquaview, and then we got Frable Plano, and then I'll find some recon angling stickers as well, and then we got a uh, jaw jacker here as well that's going to go in that so that's a big prize package there guys um over a hundred dollars worth of stuff there um you know just for to, to help get kids out keep them out in the outdoors that's our future um of the sport and uh we're gonna get that we're gonna get that going and we'll have the uh the winner for that announced uh sometime sometime tonight or possibly tomorrow so uh we're gonna go ahead and and get that done when the live show is done. And then all you guys need to do, if you want to enter to win a pair of these striker stealth gloves, all you have to do is like or react to the recon angling post um, of the live show that's going on right now. And then I'll get the winner size and get those shipped out directly. And then so when you guys get that stuff, if you want to shoot us a message with a picture of you guys holding the stuff so we can get that posted on the, on the site, we'll get that going as well. Uh, yeah, so Nick, there, there's a post on the Recon Angling page. Uh, just follow the directions on that, and then we'll get that we'll get that going. Um, I have no idea if the ice is thick enough at Sheep Creek. Um, I do not venture that far south. I would, I have no idea, man, Scott. So um, sorry about that, but I have no idea how thick the ice is down there. Um, and then Greg wants to know where you can get the five inch CJ custom tubes. Yeah, uh, you just got to, you just got you guys, you got to message uh, CJ Custom Tubes. He's extremely busy. Uh, he's got a family and stuff. So if he doesn't respond to you, please don't message me. Um, I don't, I don't have another way to get a hold of him. So, um, you know, just go on, just go message him through Facebook. Hopefully he gets back to you. But if he doesn't, um, I, I, I think they just had another baby. So he's, he's very busy with his family and, uh, and doing his business stuff and he'll get back to you as soon as possible. But that's, that's the best way to go about getting the CJ customs. Um, so yeah, they, they're in the process of, they're in the process of doing that Brady. Um, you know, it's not for me to put that out there. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's his business. So um, anyway, uh, if you're going to open it up, if you guys got a few questions, we got about five minutes or so before Tony comes on, uh, to talk about the population control, you guys can see the population domination 
uh, behind me there. We're going to go over some some basic stuff. There's still plenty of time if you guys want to come out here to the gorge and uh, catch some fish and have a good time at the tournament, win some money, maybe catch a tagged fish. Uh, make the trip up this weekend. A lot of you guys are up here for the burbot bash, um, which saw uh, lower numbers of burbot, mainly smaller burbot. So it's always, uh, that's, that's a good sign. Um, a lot less burbot this year out here for that event. Um, but yeah, if you guys have questions, comments, or anything like that, uh, let's see. Bob wants to know if I ever hang a tail out of your tube jigs. Uh, nope, not really. Uh, I never do. I know some guys will put some feathers and stuff back there to give it a little bit more action. Um, I just like fishing the straight tube with a short shank uh, jig head. Um, you know, a lot of these fish that are out fishing are going to hit the uh, head of the tube jig. If I had my Laker rod here, I'd show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, even if it's a big 10 inch tube, they're going to hit, they're going to hit that front of the tube. Maybe I got one in here that's used. Let's look in my bag here. Let's see if I got one. Oh, I do. So uh, let's see. That one doesn't show it too well. This one well though. Um, you guys can hopefully see this here. Uh, but this is uh, the five-inch CJ. I'm gonna try to get the camera to focus in on it, and it's not gonna do it. Come on. Uh, but typically, when you guys are out there fishing, um, the fish are gonna bite from the head here to about right there. So you can see just before my hook. That's where the majority of the fish are going to bite. You can't really see it on the, you can kind of see it on the tube right here. A little bit of uh, roughness looking to the tube between the front of the tube and where you tie your knot. That's where the majority of the fish bites are going to come. These fish always come to the side like this. And they do that uh, because, you know, their gills are right there. And you also got the fish's heart and stuff, liver, all that stuff is kind of right behind the head. Uh, so that's the kill shot right there um, for that. So, uh, yeah, Toby, so favorite pup lures. Um, you know, the Gary Yamamoto Curly Tail Grub works great. Uh, the White uh, Sneak Attack by Dynamic Lures works really good. Um, if you're lucky enough to have this Glow Sneak Attack Swim Jig, these work really good. Um, the smaller... The smaller CJs like this work really good as well. Um, for pups, you know, white chartreuse, those are going to be your colors. Um, these are the orange radical glow tubes, uh, and they work really good as well. Um, and you can, even these little super small CJs are perfect for, this is about the size of the kokanee right now, this size and a little bit bigger. We've actually caught a few big lake trout this year that had uh, burbot hanging out of their mouth. And you'll see when I post the pictures, uh, you'll see a, a bunch of pictures with big old burbot tails hanging out of lake trout's uh, mouth, which is really cool to see. Um, but even on these, even on these bigger 10 inch tubes here, the lake trout are always going to hit uh, this section right here. So from here to here. So a lot of guys like to run stingers and stuff. There's really no need for it. That fish, even if it's coming up from underneath it, is always going to bite in this section that I have my hands right here. So from the front to basically the first, first third, the first quarter of the bait is where those lake trout are going to hit nine out of ten times. What's going on, Johnny? Um, let's see. Let's get caught up on some questions here. I'm going to put some of this stuff away because I will make a mess of it if I don't, and it will fly everywhere. So I don't need to give you guys another reason to laugh at me. So you already got to look at this all night. So uh, anyway, let's see. Chris wants to know, is targeting smallmouth through the gorge viable? I know it is in other places, but I've never heard it. Yeah, um, I haven't really figured it out or done it, so really don't know, man. Uh, I'm sure if you could, just like any other lake, if you can find where they're schooled up, I'm sure it'd be a great time. Uh, you can get into them. Uh, let's see. Toby talked about favorite pup lures. We went over that. The HD Ice is really good, too. 
uh, Toby. So the HD Ice Glow uh, is a good option as well. Uh, Nick wants to know, let's see, I'm just going to post these up here. Any specific time you notice being better action or is it just a matter of staying consistent through the day? Um, so there is a good time. So I always tell people that, you know, the best time lake trout fishing, uh, you know, pup seems to be about an hour, an hour or two before sunrise, uh, to about eight or nine o'clock and then around noon, uh, big fish, uh, seems to be about 10 to one o'clock is prime time. Uh, you can get on these, uh, other bites that are pretty early for big fish. Uh, but the most consistent times, uh, this, you know, and I keep track of all this stuff. Uh, you know, I have a little log. I keep track of, of this stuff. But for times a fish caught going back, looking through pictures. What's awesome is all these pictures on these on our phones have a date and time stamp. Uh, so you can go back and you can kind of correlate your own catches as well and, and keep track of that stuff. That's what I do. Uh, but 10 to 1 seems to be a really good time uh, for big fish. Uh, this year it was a little bit earlier about it was a little more expanded. Sorry, about nine to two was really good. Um, so let's see. Uh, Brady wants to know how far south would you say the ice is safe? Well, dude, I, I'm not going to tell you any ice is safe. Uh, first off, um, I have no idea what the ice is like south of Buckboard with the high temperatures and the extreme winds we've had the last couple of days. It's supposed to continue into Saturday morning. So what's good today will not be good tomorrow and vice versa. So um, I really can't help you out there, unfortunately. Um, you know, we have ex we have warm temperatures in the mid 40s. That's melt nice all day, all night mixed in with, you know, 40, 50 mile an hour winds out here right now. Um, there's spots opening up that were that were frozen out here. Um, so. Uh, you, you just got to you got to go out there, unfortunately, and check it because it's going to be changing daily. Um, Ryan wants to he says he's been slain with gamblers flapping shad. Um, haven't seen that one. That sounds kind of cool. Um, let's see. Yeah, he saw some fish that I was tagged in. Hey, thanks, man. We're going to be uh, we're going to be posting some uh, stuff in uh, the future here. Um, I haven't posted anything this year. I've been kind of out doing my thing, guiding. I've been busy. Um, so you guys will see that. There goes the battery. Um, yep, there goes the battery. I told you it was going to fly. Um, so uh, we'll get those posted up. Um, just, it's been having a great time with clients. I've had some amazing clients this winter. Uh, it's been kind of like out, I'm out there fishing with friends and having a good time catching big fish. Um, it's been a, for lack of better terms, it's been kind of jaw dropping, um, how good we've done. Uh, let's see. Tana wants to know, he had a question about lures and colors. Do you think some colors encourage Max to bite if they are chasing or not biting? Um, I don't think color really matters, uh, more presentation. Um, you know, your, your simple white or pearl white is going to be kind of, you know, what those Max are looking at. Um, if you look at what a baby kokanee looks like, it's got a little bit of silver in there, silverish pearl, um, stuff like that. Uh, chartreuse is a good color as well. It's just it just shows up in our greener water out here. It stands out a little bit more. Um, but your presentation is going to be kind of key um, on these fish, especially if, if you get into a or they're you know, swimming in, but they're not really looking at it. Um, you really got to switch up your, your techniques. And I kind of went over that a few weeks ago, um, in another video. So we're not going to get too much into that, but if you want to go on our Facebook page or YouTube and look at a beginner's guide, to lake trout, I kind of go over, um, a bunch of that information. Um, so you can sit and watch that. It's very educational. Um, and then if you have any more questions or anything like that, just shoot us a message and I'd be more than happy to, to help you out. Um, yeah, the two o'clock bite is real. Uh, I, I talked to a bunch of guys this year, um, you know, clients. We were out fishing and we, you know, I was like, they're like, oh, I should we pack it up? And I'm like, oh, let's stay until at least three because I've been catching at least one big fish from like from like two to two forty five. And we, we've kept that streak alive almost every day out here. Um, so it's been really cool. Um, 
Greg wants to know if I've installed the newest update for LiveScope. Uh, yeah, I have with the color limit. It is awesome. Um, and I actually did a video. Uh, it's about five minutes long that I'm going to be posting to the YouTube page. Um, but it, it allows you to turn the gain all the way up on that live scope unit and not have the clutter in the background uh, with the color. So you can see all kinds of stuff down there. I was pretty amazed at how much of a difference it makes in clearing up the picture on your live scope, especially fishing deep where you have to turn that gain up more. Let's see. Junior JR wants to know, has a high changed the fish location year to year? Notice some spots haven't been as hot. Uh, for me, it hasn't really, even with the low water and stuff like that, uh, fish are going to relate more to structure and where the bait fish are more, more so than depth. So if the bait fish and the structure hasn't changed, unless it's, you know, of course, if it's out of water, <laughs> they can't get there. But uh, for the most part, I've been fishing the same spots that are, you know, 15, 18 feet uh, foot less of water than it was the last couple of years and the fish are still there. So yeah. Um, all right. Perfect. Yep. Um, yeah. So that's the, uh, um, on that Tana, that's, uh, that's kind of where, where I'm at, but yeah, so that's the info for the colors and stuff. Um, you know, it, it doesn't help. It doesn't hurt to, you know, put something on a little bit flashy. If you notice things are getting a little slower, um, you know, you get these loud baits that kind of get in that fish's face. They don't have hands. So they'll, uh, we've actually seen big fish on camera this year. Um, you know, I'm talking 20, 30 pound fish. Uh, when you're playing the chase game and your bait's coming up, you'll see these fish come and they slap the tube with their tail. It is, it's nuts. Um, I always thought that, that that was a thing because sometimes you'd hook some of these fish in the, in the tail and you're like, what the heck? Like I was reeling it. I felt a hit. I set the hook. You know, I know I didn't miss that much, but we actually saw on camera a uh, big fish like swat the tube with their tail uh, while 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 suspended and on the bottom. And it makes sense because if you watch some of these National Geographic videos where you have orcas and stuff like that, they will they will hit the fish and stun the fish with their tails to stun them. And then they turn around and come eat them. So I guess it makes sense that these bigger fish would do the same thing. Um, but with all the technology that's, that's out here, you can really see what these fish are doing with live scope with the new advancements in cameras that you can see, uh, you really get a, a better picture of, of, uh, what these fish are doing. And it is, it blows your mind. That's the simplest way to put it. It blows your mind with live scope and the techniques. Like if you guys come out on a guided trip, you'll see how these fish react. And if you don't do the certain jig, they just kind of swim away. But if you, if you do the right jig, these fish just come screaming in and they'll, they just smack your tube. So having all these electronics and stuff really helps you. If you're a visual learner, see and know how the fish are doing what they're doing and why. Um, let's see. Um, yeah. So I don't use sucker meat at all. Um, I, that I, if you know guys that have come out on trips with me, we don't use sucker meat at all, even for pups, uh, and do really good. Kendall Davis wants to know if we fish, uh, you know, do the fish or you care about the water temperature you're fishing in. Uh, this time of year, um, I'd say not a whole lot. Uh, later in the year, definitely for lake trout, you'll see them move into the deeper water as that upper water calm, you know, gets above that 55 degree temperature, those fish will start moving. Uh, you won't see them as much up in that, in that, you know, 50, 60 foot range. They're going to move down into that 100, 110, right below that thermal climb where the water stays, you know, right around that 45 to 55 degree temperature. Um, Nick says he's trying to learn how to jig for lake trout. Uh, do I have any jigging techniques? Yep. I'll just backtrack, Nick. If you go back on the YouTube page or Facebook and watch the video, um, I, I go over that in uh, extreme detail. So uh, we're going to get, uh, we're running a little bit behind now. So I really great comments, guys. Um, I really appreciate the dialogue um, on here and the questions. Um, you know, one last one. Yeah, Ryan says these new electronics are changing the game. Seen so many videos lately where they're using and abusing LiveScope. Uh, yeah, I mean, 
wait till you guys see the, a couple of the videos I have coming out. It's uh, it is it is pretty cool. It's also very frustrating. So um, let's see if Tony's around here somewhere. Tony, he was here somewhere. Wonder if he snuck out the back. I'm gonna go see if I can track him down real quick. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> different Tony. Yeah, <laughs> we'll bring you on, Tony. You'll fill you'll fill in for for this Tony and answer all the questions about the upcoming tournament. I'm gonna go. I think he's in the back here. So bear with me for a second, guys. I'll be right back. All right. I don't know where he went. So I guess if you guys got more questions, let's let's keep it rolling here until he uh, gets back. <laughs> we're we're doing some digging earlier today. And so some of you guys that that live in uh, Green River, Rock Springs, um, we did some like research into the uh, greater Green River intergalactic uh spaceport it's uh it's a thing out here if you guys have fished the gorge and uh just some really weird stuff that <laughs> i didn't know uh you know they did this but back in uh you know july 5th 1994 the uh, green river city council designated the landing field as a greater green river intergalactic spaceport for inhabitants of jupiter who might wish to take sanctuary in green river in the event their planet is threatened by collision from comets or meteors. Uh, kind of weird and uh, out there, but it's a thing. So I'm not really sure. Uh, just, you know, kind of a funny thing for you guys. Um, let's see. Dennis says last weekend, seen a lot of fish come screaming off the bottom. But as soon as I started jigging, the fish stopped and went back down. Yeah. So, you know, if the fish is coming up, it's just before that fish gets there, you want to start reeling and you don't stop. So the fish is going to come up. A lot of times they'll stop, but then they shoot up and they'll slam it. A lot of times we've been having uh, big fish this year uh, hit about, you know, five to 10 feet under the ice. What I recommend people is if you're in a hut and you start reeling, just keep, just keep reeling until you can see your jig and it just kind of make little nice movements like this. And uh, a lot of times you'll see those fish come up and hit right under the ice. It's pretty cool. But if you just start jigging it, you got to think about it this way, right? You have a big grizzly bear chasing you, right? And then all of a sudden the grizzly bear stops. Are you going to just sit there and start shaking like this? No, you're going <laughs> to you're going to take off running, right? And so if you're you're fishing for fish, your bait is the bait for the fish, right? So um if you start jiggling it, that's not a natural reaction to a predator coming up, um, you know, and so they know that. And a lot of times they'll come right back down. You can just what's going on, Landon, you can also just keep your bait there. And a lot of times they'll, they'll hit it, too. But a lot of times, like if you're on a flasher and this is your bait and you see a fish coming up, I'll wait till it gets, you know, right under your bait. And I start reeling about this fast. And it'll, you just keep going, that fish will come up. Now, if that goes, fish goes right back to the bottom, it's fine. But a lot of times you'll see them come up 20, 30 feet in the water column and they'll stop. And a lot of guys want to stop their bait. Keep going with the bait. That fish is going to stop. You keep going about another 10 feet and that fish is just going to skyrocket and smoke that bait. So that's what you want to do with that. Um, I think Tony is back finally. So 
We're gonna get this moved. I'm gonna move over a little bit here and we'll get Tony in here to talk about the population control uh, domination coming Ooh, up this hold week. On. We go. So, yeah. So what do you want to know? Let's well, talk. Well, I had to go put out a fire first. There was people checking in while we're always doing, you do something live and it's always something happens. Yep. Uh, so we get the tournament coming up this weekend for pups. Uh, people yep. can still enter if yep. they want. They do it online or they come in here or both. both. They can do both. They can okay. come on and both all the way up to the day before the, the turn or day uh, before the tournament. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then uh, kind of what, uh, what are the categories? Is it, is it just pups? Can they fish for anything or? Yeah, we'll have some, we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to have side jackpots for, uh, for biggest Mac. We'll provide the rulers. We have them. We have the correct ones for the fish. Um, really easy to slide the big ones up on the ice and like we do and take care of them and measure them and slide them back down the holes. So we, we'll provide that. We have some from our other derbies and We'll do biggest uh, burbot and, and smallest burbot, and that's about it. And then pups. Pups will have – we got a lot of tagged pups out there. So there's three different colors of tags. Um, every one of them is going to be 250 bucks for this tournament. Um, there's a tag number 13 that I have caught twice. Um, pretty lucky, both times on KSL Outdoors, but – we actually caught this this pup twice. I did and released it twice. Um, we're going to make him worth a thousand bucks. It's orange number thirteen. So anybody catches orange thirteen that's signed up for the Derby and it's it's them two days. It'll be worth a thousand dollars. Perfect. Yeah. And then what's uh, what's the entry fee? What is the entry fee? <laughs> it's, <laughs> 50 probably right, it's probably right behind. Probably it right behind us here. It is. It's fifty dollars to two people, two and more in a team. So yeah. Okay. Yeah. So two or more, and that's fifty dollars yeah. per team, not per person. Person, yeah. Per person? Yeah. per person, person, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if you guys have a team of four, yeah. that'd be two hundred dollars. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 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 And team average, one hundred percent payback. To you know, so it's all payback. It's there's some of the stuff right there. Um, but yeah, different ways to win. Hit the scan codes right there and you can, uh, get some stuff going there. You guys can see the payouts and stuff on here and then I'll just read some stuff off that, um, you know, each team member, uh, can enter up to 12 lake trout, 12, uh, less than 25 inches per day. And, then, uh, 20 and 24 lake trout for the two day contest. Sure. Yep. Um, you know, so if, you know, if you got a team of, if you got a team of two, um, you know, then you can essentially, you got two guys, you can bring in 48 lake, 48 lake trout. And then uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the, the weight is uh, determined by the total weight divided by the, uh, the number of people. Participants of the, the team, yeah. Yep. Averaged. The so, average. Uh, the average weight. So everybody's got the same playing field all across. It's, 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 a, it's a fun tournament. It'll be, it'll be a good tournament. So Toby wants to know if uh, they sign up online, do they need to check in when we get there before they start fishing? So what I'd like to do is what we're what some of this what we're trying to get out there is for people to come in here to Buckboard Marina, come in here to the bar area, and we'll have our side jackpot um, displays for so you can go into the Big Mac or the you know the Burbot or the small Burbot, and then you'll check in here get a at what we're doing too is you'll get a free meal ticket which redeemable for several different ways it's um, so. Once you sign up for the tournament, you'll get a free meal ticket. Every person, um, it's redeemable for a couple of burritos, hamburger, fries, the 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 Rocky Mountain oysters, or twenty uh, percent off the seafood buffet we do by. But it's only reservation only on it, and it's once a month. But yeah, and that's and that's uh, <clears throat> and that's a really cool thing on the first weekend yeah, of every month. I mean, sure. uh, king crab, lobster tail. Uh, scallops, shrimp, scallops, mashed potatoes, salad, chicken. <laughs> yeah, chicken. Uh, For you non-seafood eaters, <laughs> <laughs> we got homemade uh, uh, homemade desserts too. So yes, homemade yeah. cheesecake, cheesecakes, and, and anything. Strawberries dipped in chocolate. I mean, we do all kinds of stuff. 
it's it's really really yummy so that's redeemable and that's on us so that's part of what we're giving back to you know the participants which is it, it's a good value i mean it's it's a good thing and then we're going to give coolers away we're still going to have for the best team name and different ways to win we're going to have you know multiple prizes given away during the day we'll pull pull tickets yep. so you know, it, it, even... we encourage you coming here and, and and signing in then we then we know you're here we kind of didn't put it out there but we should have you come in the day before Friday. Yep, we're going to do from five to eight o'clock Friday for anybody who wants to come in and do this. Get, you know, get it, help us get registered and not registered, but check in. Check in. So we know you guys are in here. And then it's, you know, six o'clock the next morning. What you do from there to there is. So I turn. guess it's not mandatory <laughs> that you check in, but it's, uh, you know, it's encouraged. Yes, it's encouraged. Encouraged to come check in. So, you know. Get a meal ticket. Get and You don't have to be here if you sometime during this duration, come get the meal ticket. But also, you know, come see the bar and come see what we're about and some other stuff that we're we're working on around here. Yep. Yes. Yeah, there's a lot of there's a lot of cool stuff coming here. And then, you know, Sunday night, we're also going to have the after party too, yeah. right? For yeah. Super Bowl. Got super, got super Bowl boards going right now. So yep. yeah, they're getting filled up and uh, yeah, we definitely want the, you know, if you're around, you're more than welcome to stay around and support it. We're going to yep. have some good food. We're going to have the big chili bar for uh Sunday uh, after, during and after the, the Super Bowl. So, so uh, Travis wants to know where you caught number 13 twice. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to know, he wants to know exact. Exactly. Uh, grid, grid, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. Uh, well, it was in the pipeline area. <laughs> there you go. That's all you guys need to know. And I'm sure he's still alive. He's 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 doing good. So Tana says he really likes the the way you guys set the tournament up. Good work. Uh, and then what time are we open Saturday? Do we got breakfast? Is yeah. Tana gonna have breakfast <laughs> burritos? That's what everybody wants to know. Yeah, for sure, you know that. Yeah, breakfast burritos for sure. We'll be here from five thirty on. So. We'll be here from before start, and we'll have breakfast burritos, coffee. She'll make a bunch of goodies like she does, Tammy, I'm sure. And it, it we're, you know, this is for us. This is, this is just a fun tournament. That's all, you know, it's just, it's just for the sportsmen. So we, you know, and, and we want to do some stuff for conservation too by getting these pups out of here, of course. But, you know, it's, it's, it's more of a fun tournament than a serious tournament. And, and we kind of like to promote our tournaments that way. All right. Um, <clears throat> trying to think. And then we got some, other stuff some polls coming up about certain fish that may be possibly stocked in the gorge again sure um and so you guys are going to want to keep tuned on uh recon angling page yep. buckboard marinas page uh because we're you're going to see some polls coming out shortly and, and sh yeah very soon that you guys are if you guys fish the gorge or interested in fishing the gorge we're going to need your input because um, you know, we're, we're trying to get some stuff reestablished here and try to keep the lake, um, you know, the trophy fishery it is yeah. and try to make it better for you guys. Uh, but we need we need your interaction. We need your um, you know, we need your help on this stuff. So uh, be on the lookout for these polls, because this information is going to go to different agencies mm -hmm. to show that there is an interest from the sportsmen uh, for these fish out there to be stopped again in the gorge. Uh, moving forward so and it, it it could definitely be the make or break yes and if it if it happens or not yeah and it's uh sustainability of all species in the gorge it's not just about max it's not about you know the kokanee the pups whatever it's sustainability across the board and keeping this trophy fishery a trophy fishery whether it be browns max kokanee whatever but this is a trophy fishery we need to keep it that way and the only way we're going to do it is by the sportsman's input you guys input and this is no bs it's it's a real thing so <clears throat> we're gonna be looking for what's coming up thank you all right well uh let's we'll give it a few moments here before uh we kind of hop off here but it sure. is and that way it gives people some time if they got any questions or comments for you here at at buckboard um but we, uh, the last couple of weeks, we spent a lot of time getting the, the tackle shop ready to go. There's still a little bit stuff to do, but uh, hopefully, you know, we're going to have a wide variety of stuff for guys coming out here next yeah. year that they can buy at the lake, at the, sure. at the store here. 
Uh, yeah. Anything you want to talk about that at all? or? Yeah, we got a lot of stuff coming up. As you know, right now we have some of the best bait. We get our bait right out of the gorge. It's all fresh cut bait. So our bait is right out of here. It makes a big difference. And the baits, you know, we were the tubes. I mean, the tubes we have for the fishermen, the, the no bullshit tubes, I would say. Yeah. <laughs> we have stuff here that's that because he uses it. DJ uses it. We all use it. This is stuff that you can pick up here locally. You know, if you don't want to buy a bazillion of them, we do have all the, the big tubes for the, the trophies. And also we're going to promote kokanee fishing and our, our, our products, our lures, our BMF kokanee lures. And pretty much you got to come try the kokanee stuff we make because it's, there's no BS about that either. It's, it's phenomenal stuff and it's, it's made to last, you know, with, you know, top quality hooks, lines, leaders. There's no, there's no half-ass China shit. It's all American. Yeah. <laughs> And that's and that's the thing, you know. A lot of people, um, you know, there's a lot of great there's a lot of great kokanee tackle shops out there in different yeah. businesses. I think what sets some of them apart and even homemade stuff, it really comes down to, you know, the line, the line and the hooks. Honestly, yeah, are, are the two yeah. biggest things, especially with with salmon and and the different companies that you see. Sure. Um, because a lot of it is does come from the same place. Yeah. Um, there's no lie about that. But there's a lot of guys that take pride in in how they put how they assemble and put the stuff together. Um, um, and that is also true. You know, we're not selling. I'm not selling. I want to. I don't want to sell you a hundred lures. I want to sell you one lure that catches a lot of fish and this that, that repeatable using it, and then show you how to re rig it too. If the hooks get uh, worn out, we can. You know, there. This everything you can re rig we make, and so it's it's durability and there's you'll see when you use them what you know what that what the catch rate would be compared to a at the lesser brand per yeah. se that's just a, a production thing it's two dollars and ours are ten dollars and ours last 10 times longer but you know it, there's a lot into it the hooks the leaders the components i mean is you know we so source all of our stuff you know to last yeah i think this would be a good time to tell you I'm giving away your gloves. Thank you, man. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> so those of you guys that are watching, uh, if you want to win Tony's gloves that I That's told good. him I'd give him. Yeah. Uh, but no, uh, you guys, if you're watching right now and you didn't know, uh, we're doing a, a, a striker stealth glove giveaway. Um, all you have to do is, is like or react to the recon angling post. And then I'll announce the winner of that with the, with the winner of the kids uh, fishing that we did contest um but all you have to do is like or react to uh the post to win a pair of these uh, i'll notify the winner uh you guys tell me what size glove you want uh, i i wear you know uh an xl um so and we'll get those shipped directly out to you guys uh with that ryan wants to know when he can come up and camp at buckboard anytime right yeah oh one thing i forgot to mention so yeah in this tournament we're offering free camping to anybody that signs up for the tournament for the Friday, Saturday night, and no early checkout on Sunday in case you want to watch Super Bowl and drink some beer. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, that's one thing we're offering. I forgot to mention was that we are we are making uh, you know the arrangements for anybody that, that wants to pull a trailer up and say that we have power and no sewer, but we have power and places for people to stay. But as far as camping, full hookups is just pretty much when – the weather breaks from you know freezing point we can turn the water back on and it won't be far now you know i, I would say within another like four to six weeks we should be getting there pretty right. close yeah toby says i uh, appreciate you guys for putting on the tournament looking forward to it uh, looking forward to seeing you out here uh let's see donette says sounds like fun it'll be a great time um it's like a couple people like that uh the little size xl so <laughs> But as I talked about earlier, these gloves are are pretty cool. I I really like them. This is the those of you guys that come out with me uh, uh, on a trip. Uh, Kurt, I know you're in here watching. Uh, this is what happens, uh, and it's kind of healed a little bit. But this is what happens when you don't put the fish glove on. Uh, fish just absolutely shreds your thumb uh, like it does our tube jigs, and then uh, it got my it got my other hand too. So. Um, that's why you got to have a fish glove if you're going to pop yeah. these suckers in. Even like for me this year, a lot of you guys that have come out with me, I've been tail grabbing these fish as they swim by the hole. I just do that. 
and grab by the tail and pull them up. I, I tried doing that to one fish, and uh, I, I forgot who it was. I think it was Kurt. I think it was you, but that fish gave me a pretty darn good bath. Um, it, I got about half of his tail out, and he got away and kicked, and that water went flying up. But these are really good gloves to protect your hands, um, you know, from uh, from these lake trout. A lot of people don't realize these big fish that you see behind us, much like the muskie you see behind us, uh, have teeth, uh, mm -hmm. and they will make you pay. Yeah, well, um, that's all it takes, two shreds, and you're done. Yep. Uh, so what, Tanner wants to know uh, how many teams we have so far. I think we were almost at 70, right? Probably yeah, more 70. now. Yeah, 70. Yeah. So 70. So if you guys are watching, you're on the fence, let's make it 100 teams. Yeah. That just means bigger payout for you guys that are fishing, yeah. that are fishing the event. And you're also helping uh, – you're helping the lake out with these pups. You know, yeah. a, a lot of people are kind of skeptical about it. But Tony and I have really – We've looked at the data that has been out there, um, and Tony has done a lot more research on, um, you know, s stuff that were research studies that were done in the 90s, and this was before the burbot were in there, um, as to why, you know, it's important. And a lot of these fish that we're taking out, I had a couple clients that came out, and I explained to them, you know, take some of these pups out, and sure enough, some of these fish were taken out. They don't just have one or two kokanee, but a lot of them will have three or four salmon and yeah. and one lake trout. And yeah. so that really, you know, a lot of these fish are eating burbot, which is good, yeah. um, you know, but um, there, there is, you know, reason behind what we're doing. We're trying, you know, we're just trying to help the fishery out and maintain the trophy fish that are here. And it's not going to impede the trophy fish moving up. It's just like, no. if you guys look at any, any ocean study, if you have too many of a weight class of fish, it prevents other weight classes from, from moving up. And then you, you get an overpopulation mm -hmm. of competing. Yeah. Of, uh, a competing. Biomass for a uh, food source. Yep. Everybody's and, eating that food source. Yep. And, and it uh, never ends well. No, no. So. And it's and in the gorge, it's bioplankton that the, 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 the baby pups eat and the kokanee eat and then the graduating two fish but there's very limited bait fish in this in this in this lake for for other species besides max and browns and it's it's there's a lot to go into yep. it so but we're we're working on it we're working on it trust me and it's it's us we came here and we seen what was going i've fished the gorge forever we came here we seen what's going on at the pups we wanted to know why we asked questions after you know purchasing this place and being here on the ground every day, we see what's going on. It's the lack of, I would say, the fishery getting responsible for what's happening here, taking responsibility for what's happening and and doing something about it. And that's why we started tagging the fish. The It, it was Buckboard Marina, our idea with, you know, one of the biologists, Rob Keith, to start stack tagging these fish for a reason, because the reason is they're overpopulating and it's, it's a real thing. And it's a serious, serious thing. And there's plenty of studies in Blue Mesa, Ponderé. There's plenty of studies about these fish that you need. People need to educate themselves on because it's literally years away from happening here. So and it is it's a true thing. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Well, uh, let's see. Yeah. Michael just says thanks. There goes my battery again. Um, if you guys, one last shot here, if you have any questions or anything for Tony before we let him go, uh, Jeremy, uh, who was up here, uh, last, last weekend, uh, it says great amenities and great people. Cal Buckboard <laughs> Marina. He had a good time, didn't he? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I think he caught some, some okay fish. He you caught know, a we couple. Call it, we called them big Colorado fish yeah. for him. Yeah. Big Colorado so. <laughs> fish. Yeah. I think he did okay up here. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no problem landing. Uh, but if you guys got any last questions for Tony, uh, if not, we're going to let him, uh, we're going to let him go, go cook soup for this weekend. Yeah. There we <laughs> Saturday, we're making uh, seafood bisque, and it's lovely, lovely. <laughs> it is pretty good. It's good. It's good. And homemade bread so, and burger and balls. <laughs> yeah. You got to have the Rocky Mountain oysters. You do. Yeah. You got to try the Rocky Mountain oysters we have here. They're phenomenal. It's nothing like you think. And nope. It's worth trying. no one told you what they were, you'd, you'd be eating them anyway. Yeah. So, you think it's chicken fried chicken. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
Well, yeah. Thanks for okay. thanks for coming on, man. Yeah, and, thank uh, you. And I, you guys need to support Shane. What he's doing is a good good thing, and we support him. And you know, we we're glad he's here helping us here at Buckboard because he brings a lot of knowledge to the fishery. And you know, he's a he's a he's a all right person. <laughs> I'm not half bad, but, you know, when I'm not sleeping no, anyway, no, right? No, no, he's not bad. Um, yeah. Well, cool guys. We're gonna go ahead and uh, wrap the show up. Thank you, everybody, again for the support. Uh, if you haven't, go on the uh, on the Recon Angling Facebook page, and if, if you guys want to enter your kids, there's still some time. I got to go in and manually select the comments uh, and re-download the software, um, so you guys get a little bonus time. Uh, I'll come back live and just do a brief live and show you guys who the winner is. Uh, we'll, we'll get that information, get this prize pack sent out. Same thing with the striker gloves, if you guys want to enter. All you have to do is like or react to the live posts that we're doing right now and then go ahead and um, I will randomly pick a winner the same way and then we'll go ahead and get those uh, shipped out. So um, thanks again for everybody that's watching. Uh, really appreciate your support. Hopefully we can meet some of you guys in person at, at Buckboard this weekend. Come say hey. And uh, until then, uh, tight lines and good luck out there fishing, guys. Thank you.